Yonder is a city whose name will one day be known in the far places of the earth. Bethlehem of Judah. Generations have yet to pass before its star shall rise in the east. Much shall happen in these lands and be told. For nearby, across the Jordan, in the land of Moab, lives a people who of old have hated the God of Israel and who serve a God of stone. Kimush, thirsty for the blood of the young and the innocent. Yes? Are you giving her to be raised in the service of our God? But you pay something. Only when there is want. Well, there is want, uh, bad crops, sickness, uh, can't feed my family. in good health? Yes. Not lame? No. No blemishes? Of all my daughters, she is the strongest and the prettiest. What is your name? Kemosh is good. Kemosh is strong. He is the force of life, the bringer of victories, the shield against our enemies. To one among you will soon come the greatest honor that can fall to a daughter of Kemosh. An endless honor, a glory forever. The high priest of all Moab will judge of you. It is between the first and the third. Mm. 
this time. See that she is properly prepared. What is this? I've not seen it before. She should not have been permitted to go before Lord Haddock. You know very well there must be no mark or blemish of any kind. It was not there a moment ago. Look! I have no blemishes. Very well. Take the other child. My lady, it's going away. It's almost gone. The high priest has chosen her to be sacrificed and that is the end of it. Pass from a life of learning about your God to a life of serving him. Your first duty will attach to our yearly ceremony of sacrifice. In this year of Chemosh, the child is Teba. Among you shall be shared the honor of fitting her for immolation. Obey your rectress in all things. You will return now to your chambers. Ready? Your beneficence. This? <laughs> this gross piece to be worn on the altar of Chemish. It's heavy and dead. It lacks luster. But it is wrought of the finest gold. Have you no sense, old man? It needs glitter. It must be seen at the farthest reaches of the assemblage. It must flash when the sun strikes it. With your leave, gracious lady, I designed this with what I understood you well, wished. No matter what you understood, the crown for this child must be radiant as though for the head of a queen. Yes, but what I tried to do was... You to... were not engaged to try. You are unworthy of the honor of this work. Look. Look how graceful this is and how up bound the other. But that, your beneficence, I designed for a bride. It is for feasting and joy. It celebrates life, whilst the other is to be worn in death. Say no more. But his sacrifice to Chemosh is endowed with eternal life. Teva, tell this man what it means to die for Chemosh. To die for Chemosh is to live forever. I will make a crown that will sparkle in the sun. It will glow with precious stones. It will be happy as a bride. You disapprove of sacrifice? Of human sacrifice. Take Teba outside and wait for me. I've never heard sentiments like yours before. How do you come by them? Through belief in a merciful God. And where is this God? Show him to me. He is invisible. <laughs> that makes it convenient for carrying him with you, does it not? Make the crown as I wish it. Deal with this person in the matter. Have him bring the crown to you. And remember my wishes. It must be radiant. You will bring the crown to me in the sacrarium of the temple. Yes, my lady. Do you know where it is? Yes, my lady. Above all, remember the wish of the beneficence, that the crown be radiant, not gross and uh, earthbound. Radiant lacks luster. 
They have mountains of gold and palaces full of jewels, and they must use every bit of it. Never mind their gold and jewels. Why don't you learn to hold your tongue? You know how sensitive they are about human sacrifice? Not sensitive enough! Their ritual is their affair. You had no right to raise your voice against it. Father, the thought of killing that child... Keep such thoughts to yourself. Don't spoil things for the rest of us. Oh, don't be foolhardy. We are still Judeans and they are Moabites. Don't forget that. They won't. But, Mother, they don't even think of us as Judeans. Look at Orpah, Moabites. Didn't she marry me? Aren't we accepted? That is your happiness. You did speak foolishly, Malone. But I'm glad of it. Thou art the force of light. To our enemies give evil, plague, famine, and misery. To our enemies give evil, plague, famine, and misery. To our king grant health, strength, and enduring years of life. To our king grant health, strength, and enduring, and enduring years, years of life. Of life. The artisan is here. Admit him. We shall go on with this later. slaves, as you do of sacrificing to the gods? Are you going to answer me? My answer would offend you. No more than you have already done. It is not wise to be lax with servants. It only encourages disobedience. One must be strong with them. You disagree? I never confuse gentleness with weakness, my lady. More of the teachings of your invisible God. Not exactly, although his laws forbid the striking of slaves. An abused slave can even sue his master for freedom. Sue his master? <laughs> <laughs> this God of yours, has he a name? He is known by many names. Elohim, Adonai, Jehovah. It matters not so long as one knows he exists. And I do. If he's invisible, how do you know he exists? Is it his invisibility that amuses you? <laughs> Among other things. May I ask a question in all deference? You may. Suppose you wish to pray, but you're not near an image of Chemosh. Then I go to him. Well, suppose a soldier of Moab is wounded on a field of battle and cannot get to an image of Chemosh to pray for his life. Then he thinks of Chemosh. But the Chemosh he's thinking of is invisible at the time he thinks of him. And my work, gracious lady, I have sometimes repaired your God. Isn't it hard to believe that a, a God who cracks and crumbles and, and can be repaired by a mere artisan like myself can be the same God who makes the birds sing and the sun rise and set? How can a God whose own head gets broken mend the broken heads of his soldiers? Tell me more about your Jehovah of the many names. You have but to send for me any evening. Perhaps we can talk in the gardens, alone. You will grow old waiting, artisan. My name is Malone. Impudent merchant. What else did she say besides fine? Oh, nothing important. Oh, it was all genial? Sure, there was even laughter. Laughter? In the temple of Chemosh? Mm -hmm. I have been told it is always very grim. No, not always. The festivals of fertility are far from grim. 
Hey, Alpha? Huh? Is this the house of Malone? It is. Enter. message for me from the temple I'm being sent for. Something about our work? No, nothing like that. The girl. Well, well. The young priestess. And she sent for you? Be careful, man. Even for a Moabite, it would be dangerous. For a Judean. Oh, you make much of nothing. Have no fear, mother. You have the wrong notion. I must make clear why I sent for you. That is not necessary, my lady. That you did is enough. And it pleases me very much. There is no reason for you to be pleased. Since it is not about you that I've been thinking. But your ridiculous God. That was all I inferred. Well, tell me more about him. Since you say your God is everywhere, perchance I am stepping on him right now. Indirectly, yes, the Earth being one of his creations. The Earth? Then you may as well claim that he made the moon too. It is told that he made two great lights in the heavens, the greater to rule the day and the lesser to rule the night. And all other luminous objects in the sky, I suppose. Yes. And one closer by. Why do you look at me like that? Because you're so beautiful, so very beautiful. Don't you know that you are? I have never thought about it. No one has ever told you, no man has ever looked at you as I do. If he, if he has, I have not seen it. You were not watching for it. Isn't it pleasant even for a priestess to be told that she is beautiful, especially when it's true? Is beauty so important? The beauty that's within, as I know it is with you. How do you know? I'm older than you, and the years teach. Your teachings are strange to me. I will hear no more of them. Don't be afraid of what I'm saying. But I am afraid. Perhaps tomorrow night when you are less afraid. You are so young. You could be so beautiful one day. What's wrong? I'm so happy for you. Go, Teba. Put your crown among your other fittings. What are you doing here? You haven't dismissed me. What's, what's wrong with telling a child she's beautiful? Nothing, my lady. You may go. Kira. I am... I am sorry I struck you the other day. Thank you, my lady.
You have been singularly honored. The king is making a journey through the land to see the many arms and precincts of his kingdom. He has asked for four of the most seemly of your rank to join the party. Comport yourselves well. <laughs> will stand to exalt your greatness for all time, my king. Would it please your magnificence to see the entire figure? Order them to turn the platform. You! Tell of you, man, over here! Put your back to us! seen enough. Have you enjoyed the journey? Yes, my king. What is your name? Ruth. When do you complete your purification? In the spring, sire. It will please me to welcome you to the royal household. Thank you, sire. And as the prisoners were turning the platform, it began to give way. The statue of Camor started to tip. My heart stopped for a moment. I thought the king would be crushed. But luckily, the platform held. And only prisoners were crushed? Yes, three of them, squashed like insects. It must have been exciting. Oh, yes, it was. Aren't you pleased to hear of my experience? Fascinating. But I haven't told you the best. His Magnificence, the King, actually spoke to me. He asked my name and how long before my purification would be complete. When I told him, he smiled and said, you would be pleased to welcome me to his royal household. All in all, a memorable journey for you. You disapprove. I wish I'd never let you come. Why? Why, Ruth? Because you disturb and confuse me. I've been raised to serve Kemosh. He is my God, my only God. And he's been good to me. How has he been good? No, I'm not challenging you. You mean he's given you comfort and position? More than that, much well, more. tell me. For one thing, when I was a child, I was chosen to be sacrificed. Suddenly, a blemish appeared on my arm, so they did not take me. But no sooner did another child replace me than the blemish faded. Kemosh had spared me. Perhaps it was a higher god than Kemosh who spared you. Besides, I, I thought being chosen for sacrifice was a coveted honor, yet you speak of being spared from it. You've confused me, so I, so I can't think. I would rather give up the most important thing in my life. The joy of seeing you, they bring you distress. Shall I not come again, Ruth? No. But please, my lord, no more talk about your people across the Jordan who are forbidden to punish slaves, who cannot feed the animals or even harm a bird. Please, my lord, tell me no more about your strange god with so many names and no face. Lord, 
this is all wrong. I was at peace until I met you. Perhaps it would be best if I don't see you again. No, no. My lady, my lady. I will come again, whether you send for me or not. No, if Kara's not watching out for you, they'll find you and kill you. You must go now. I made it for you. The tablets of the law, God's law. I cannot take it. Cast it away if you like once you leave me, but keep it until then. I made it for you. Made it with great love. Such great love. What is it, Deborah? I, I had a dream. Come, tell me about it. A golden bird came through my window. He had a silver beak and this beak stabbed me here. And blood began to run. It's nothing, Teba. Nothing, just a dream. There are alien guards who are jealous of you and envious of Temush. They try to frighten you with a bad dream. No, but they will fail because Kemosh protects you. You must get your sleep. Your great day is coming close. <laughs> the God. I'm deep in sin, my Lord Haddock. Let me judge of that. I doubted the ceremony of the sacrifice. You've seen many sacrifices since you were old enough to understand. You have never doubted them before. What has happened, Ruth? I, I talked with a man who, who believes no God could be pleased to accept the life of a child on the altar. I could not meet his questioning. Who's the man? Malone, the Judean artisan. He's, he's a gentle, a kind man, and, and that makes my burden greater. You have given heed to one of our old enemy. You are naive, my daughter. You have much to learn. Ruth, do you not know in your inward heart that this sacrifice of the virgin child is wholesome? Yes. That it brings fertility to the land? Yes. Do you not know that this sacrifice purges our land of sins and sustains us against our enemies? Yes, yes, my lord. I know all this in my inward heart. The ways of Chemosh are not to be questioned. Yes, my lord. I have found favor in the king's eyes. In the spring, you will be a priestess of high station. You may even become one of the king's consorts. You still have misgivings, Ruth? No. No, my lady. You are going to be stronger for your experience. Remember, you have the exalted honor and duty of leading the child Tabor to the altar tomorrow. Be at peace with yourself. <laughs> 